Okay, <clears throat> now that we've um, come past a shock tube, right, um, we started uh, learning the um, flow property changes across a, uh, an expansion fan. We started with learning, doing a brief review of how things um, work in terms of uh, wave propagation, right. And we used uh, linearized equations, we introduced the concept of um, how we could use uh, small perturbations, right. The, uh, the way property changes in when there is a wave disturbance or a wave is traveling, traveling is considered to be a small disturbance over the ambient. So, that is something we sort of dealt with at the time. So, let us just sort of look a look at a problem and see if we can uh, use that concept here, right, and solve uh, equations and, you know, get some information about the flow properties, okay. So, say we have a um, problem uh, like this. So, let me uh, draw this, okay. So, let us just say Okay, I need to draw a straight line here. Okay, that is as straight as I can go. Fine, so we have the x axis like that. Okay, so I am going to draw this. Um, Okay. So, what we have here is this uh, essentially this is like this is called this uh, wavy wall problem. Okay. So, okay. This is the wavy wall uh, problem. So, in this here, so essentially what this is. Let us call this as L, which is the wavelength. Okay, this could uh, this could be lambda if, if you want to choose it that way. Okay, um, this is the amplitude, of course. This is the amplitude. H. Okay, and uh, the y ordinate is given as y w or y wall, right, and this is actually given to us as okay. So, this is essentially the uh, problem. So, what we need to do here, what we need to do here is um, assume that h is small. So, essentially uh, consider, considering this as a small perturbation problem, find out an expression for the velocity potential, which is uh, phi, right, and uh, the surface pressure coefficient, the pressure coefficient at the wall. So, this is what we uh, need to uh, find out, okay. So, what I will do here um, is just write out the velocity uh, potential equation, just to sort of uh, remind you, okay. So, um, okay, before I do that, so essentially what is happening here is that we have a flow, right, we have a flow which comes in like that, right. So, incoming free stream is at uh, 
a Mach number of Mach number which is m infinity right. And then we are going to do this uh, you know problem to find out velocity potential phi and coefficient of pressure at the uh, wall ok. Now, uh, for irrotational e flow right for irrotational e flow we know that the velocity can be written in the in terms of uh, the gradient of the velocity potential right. So, that is essentially for an irrotational e flow and let me just uh, write out the velocity potential equation just to uh, remind you ok. And that is So, this is essentially the velocity potential uh, equation ok. So, now let us just um, uh, so the basically the point is that when you have a free stream. So, uh, you know we have a free stream and then suddenly it encounters this wall ok which is a wavy wall like this. So, how does uh, how do we then how does the then the velocity in that flow field change you know which was just a free stream and it encounters a wall like this. And in this particular case, so uh, the, uh, the uh, nature of the wall or the contour of the wall is given right, which is by this uh, expression here right. And um, so, we need to f uh, basically assume that this is a small perturbation. So, what would that mean in terms of uh, linearizing the equations that we will use? So, this is our uh, problem. So, ok. So, let us go ahead and try to solve this. So, let us write our free stream. So, our free stream is essentially in vector form this is um, uh, how it is right. This is my free stream and say the local velocity. So, then the, the local velocity Right. So, local velocity we are going to call that this is equal to this is a total local velocity ok. So, then let us say that the perturbations in the velocities are so. So, So, the perturbation, perturbation velocity you can you can call that that ok. Say let us call this as q is say we are going to call that u prime ok. So, essentially we have a free stream right, we have a free stream. Uh, which has and we have a perturbation velocity which looks like this and we have a local velocity of 
this. What is the connection between these? If we, if we consider a perturbation theory as we talked about earlier, so the free stream is perturbed by this velocity to get uh, the uh, current local velocity, right. So, if we do that, okay. So, if we essentially do that, which means that uh, what we have here in, 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 in here is that this v is nothing but the is not it. So, this is my local velocity which is the free stream plus the perturbation right which means that what we have here is this what we have is u plus um, okay so essentially let us say okay right so this is the so therefore this is the local velocity which means where essentially this is my u, this is my v, this is my w which is the local velocity. So, I have the free stream which is perturbed using this perturbation velocity, we get the total local uh, velocity. Okay? So, now um, as you can see that for the if you have a velocity potential like this you can uh, represent your local velocity in terms of gradients of that potential. So, similarly we can have a perturbation potential corresponding to uh, you know this velocity. So, let us say that the we have a perturbation potential which is say this is corresponding to a perturbation potential uh, phi p and this is corresponding to a perturbation potential so, sorry this is corresponding to a potential phi. So, which would mean right which would mean if you sort of you know look at this uh, equation over here. So, essentially so this is the local velocity which is equal to the perturbation velocities right plus the uh, plus the free stream is not it this is what we get. So, this is my local velocity which is corresponding to this uh, perturbation potential corresponding to this potential okay. that is equal to the perturbed velocities which is given by the gradient of a perturbation potential and this uh, perturbation is applied to the um, to the free stream right. So, therefore, this is what we get. So, hence hence from here we can write if we integrate this now. So, therefore, say phi is equal to phi p so essentially we need to find out a potential for our wavy wall uh, problem over here you know we need to find out the potential so that uh, once you find the potential we we shall know the uh, flow properties uh, the uh, velocities as well Right. So, now what we see over here is that the uh, surface potential for the wavy wall can be written as a uh, the, the component the component of the free stream plus a perturbation potential. So, as long as we can find the perturbation potential we should be now be able to find the um, surface potential for this kind of problem. Okay, so, now we have this. Okay, so, let us say call this as okay. So, let us say let us call this equation out here as 1 okay. and we shall call say this equation as 2. So, we can now write so therefore, you see this is the velocity potential and correspondingly this is the velocity potential equation right. Now, we said that using a perturbation uh, theory we are able to write this potential as a free stream potential plus a perturbation potential which is what we derived here in 
this particular equation. So, now what we will do is we will use this equation into 1 and see what we get. Okay. So, um, this is going to be well it is almost like a half page equation, but I will write it out okay, uh, just to sort of um, scare you okay, and then we will see what we will do with this. Okay. It is important to write this. So, okay. so, if I were to write this, so essentially I am, write, I am uh, using the uh, surface potential uh, equation that we got here into the uh, velocity potential equation. Okay. So, it looks like this. Okay, this is the uh, left hand side, right. So, what we get here is on the right hand side, Okay. okay, this is going to take me a while to even write this. So, okay, so we have got the second term here, which will be okay. Well, there is of course a certain okay. Okay. Um, Okay, then Okay, so if we, hopefully you are all awake by this time. So, this is what it looks like. Okay. If I uh, incorporate, if I incorporate the um, uh, perturbation potential right, uh, into the uh, surface potential equation, then the velocity potential equation looks like this. Okay. So, this is an exact e equation as you can uh, see over here 
it is an exact equation and uh, although the left hand side out here which is this is linear clearly the right hand side is not okay you can see this so therefore what we are going to do over here is bring in the uh, small perturbation theory okay so if i do that small perturbation theory essentially will mean right so this and hence their squares and you know higher orders will be you know negligible so this is my small perturbation this is my small perturbation assumption so if i use the small perturbation assumption here then what i should be able to do over here as you can see you, if you look at each term over here, so the all these terms here, so say, say let us look at this, okay. So we have u dash by v infinity, the square of that term and we have squares, etc, 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 etc. So now all of these terms, so these terms can be neglected, right, because we are using small perturbation theory and if we do that, what we see is that essentially what we are left out with um, uh, this equation. So, if I call this equation as say 3, okay, if I leave this out, all I get from there is right so this is uh, this is what we get and let's call this equation as 4 this is what we get and of course we can also so we we basically have written our velocity potential equation in terms of this you can see uh, this now reduces if i use a small perturbation theory this is our velocity potential equation essentially is in terms of the perturbed uh, velocities right so i can also write this i can also write this as in terms of the uh, perturbation potential right perturbation potential which would be right and let me call this as 5. So, what you basically see over here is that these two equations here 4 and 5 right which we get by uh, using the small perturbation assumption into the uh, exact uh, nonlinear equation surface potential equation in 3. So, unlike, unlike 3 now these two are linear equations using the uh, small perturbation uh, theory right and uh, in here so now we are going to use say so basically we have a an, an expression in terms of uh, this now if so now basically we um, uh, will go ahead and try and uh, solve this now for uh, this particular case again let us take the uh, 2d version of this which would be essentially this equal to 0. So, if I take that how do I go ahead and solve this ok. So, let us go ahead and uh, do that. right so so essentially what we have in in 2d okay this is what we have
Okay. So, this is uh, what mm, this is the governing equation now. So, how do we go ahead and solve this? Now, what we will use here is a method of uh, the separation of variables. Okay. So, this is the mathematics part of it. So, this is the part of calculus if you are not uh, you know uh, if you are not if you do not remember it I think you should just go and run yourself through it you know one should be fine. I will walk you through the whole um, procedure of this. Okay, but I will not go into details of the mathematical, uh, you know, derivations and all of that. Okay, but we'll walk, we'll we'll walk uh, step by step through the you know, process of it. Okay, so using the method of separation of variables, so the way we will basically write is say, um, right? So f and g are uh, just uh, functions. Okay as so, f is a function of x and g is a function of y. So, this is a separation of variables. If I do that, right. So, if I do this essentially, so you know if you see here, so so essentially what we get is this, is not it, right. And therefore, Okay. So, similarly, similarly, if you look at this, okay, tell me, so this is, okay. So, this is uh, what we get from here. Now, if I do this, so let us now use, uh, okay, so let us say, so this is say our equation A. So, we have this expression here and this expression here using a uh, separation of uh, variables. So, if I do this, so therefore, I will use B and C into A. So, if I do that, what do I get? So, if I do that, what essentially I get is, Right. So, delta phi del x 2, so that is delta phi delta phi del x 2, okay. so which is okay, um, plus delta phi del, v, uh, del y 2 which is this thing. Okay. So, uh, again now what we can do is divide this whole thing by uh, f g. If I divide this whole thing, so if I divide by f g, So, okay. So, this is the uh, relationship that we uh, uh, get and finally, what we will do is we will divide this whole thing again we will take Okay. So, finally, we will also we can also write this as okay. we will we will just take uh, take this term uh, divide by this term throughout. So, again what we will get is Okay, and let us call this as say t. 
Okay. Now, uh, this is it. Now, let us say that x is held uh, constant. Okay. X is x is held constant. So, f is or say x is held constant and so uh, y, y varies. So, we will hold say x is constant. right and y varies right so which means that okay so this is a uh, constant say and let us call this as uh, okay so this is a constant okay so which means that um, so, again, so if that is true, so therefore from D what we get is that 1 by right and this is constant. So, uh, we are saying that we would hold x constant and y will vary and so what we see from D is that this term is we just take this on the right hand side which is this, this is a constant and uh, let us call this as, we we'll just call this as omega square you know just to say to say omega square. Now, if I do that then from here, so basically we get two relationships, do not we? So, for example, if you look at one of this, so essentially what we get is that this is equal to a constant and this is also equal to a constant. So, we get two relations from this. So, which are if you if you just sort of look at this from this what we get is okay. Okay, so, this is one relationship and let us call that as say E and the other one we get from here which is okay. So, essentially these are my two relationships. Okay. So, using the separation of variables f and g being arbitrary functions and uh, what we get from here is uh, two uh, these relationships where this um, f and g are arbitrary functions and, f and omega is here is a constant. Okay. So, now if we can find appropriate values of f, g and omega then we should be able to sort of uh, solve this equation. Now, the reason we write this okay, equations in this term, in the, we wrote this in this form because this has a ready made solution from us, this is from our calculus, right. So, we have a ready made solution for this which will be Okay, so, the solution to these equations say E and F is given in this form. So, then, so G solution is given as again we have constants And f x has okay. So, this is my ready made solution. So, if we can find appropriate values of a 1, a 2, b 1 and b 2 then we should be 
able to find out f x and g y and hence we will be able to find a solution for our velocity uh, put out velocity potential because phi p is equal to um, f x into g y. Okay. So, let us see if we can do that. So, usually how we go about this is that we try to see if we have enough boundary conditions right. Then we can see so if we can find appropriate values for this. Okay. Now, you see uh, of course, uh, phi p. So, even if we have so, phi p is a finite value right, which is the velocity the perturbed velocity potential perturbed velocity potential out here has a finite value for all cases of x and y. So, we have nothing here to tell us that the velocity potential blows up or becomes indeterminate or discontinuous. So, therefore, even when y tends to infinity right, we have a finite uh, perturbed velocity potential. Now, let us look here. Now, when y tends to infinity, okay, now Now, when y tends to infinity, look at g y. Okay. Now, this term, this term becomes nearly 1, right. So, because this term becomes uh, to the negative infinity, so this will, this term, this exponential over here will tend to nearly 1. Whereas, what happens to this term here? This tends to infinity as well, right. So, therefore, if to keep this as uh, really uh, finite right. So, in this case we it, it this means that we have to set a 2 equal to 0, because otherwise um, right. So, therefore, when y tends to infinity what we see over here is that if y tends to infinity, g y will tend to infinity if we have a 2. This first term out here, so this exponential will tend to nearly 1, but this exponential out here will tend to infinity. So, therefore, unless and until we have a 2 0, we will not have a finite value for g. So, therefore, if y tends to infinity, then a 2 out here should be uh, 0 to keep it finite. Okay. All right. So the, now the next thing is, so we have we have a wall uh, here, right? We have a wall given over here, and the equation of the wall is also given to us. Okay. Now we have this flow moving over the wavy wall. So definitely, so the, when the wall say, so if if I take a streamline, which is say on the wall itself how will the streamline look like. So, let me draw some streamline vectors, right. So, this will be my local velocity vector, then this will look like my local velocity vector so on and so forth. So, essentially what I am doing over here, I am just saying that my velocity vector is tangent at the wall the velocity vector is tangent to the uh, wall right. So, therefore, uh, the flow is tangent to it right. So, therefore, another boundary condition is uh, flow is tangent to it right. So, therefore, now in here it, if, if we sort of uh, go back over here. So, this is my say say let us look at for example, this velocity vector over here okay. or say let us look at this velocity uh, this velocity vector over here. Now, Okay. So, this was the original, this was the original streamline, right. How do we get this local velocity? So, we get it with, with a stream, with a uh, free stream which has been perturbed by u prime and this is the v prime in the vertical direction, right. 
So, this is essentially my, uh, this is essentially how the velocity profile looks like. Okay. So, this is the local velocity. So, if I may sort of uh, highlight this a little more. So, this is my, this is my local velocity vector, right. And if I see the components of it, the horizontal component, is the x component is the free stream plus the perturbed velocity, uh, perturbed velocity, x velocity and in the y direction is the perturbed um, y component of the velocity. So, therefore, if I have to take the tangent, right. So, what does the tangent mean over here? So, at this point, okay, at this point therefore, at the wall, can I write it as this, right. So, this becomes the tangent. So, therefore, that is what I am going to do over here. So, so tangent to it. So, essentially what I am saying is that d y by d x right at the wall okay, is yeah well I, I use a subscript w for wall. So, essentially this is the wall velocities um, uh, here. Okay. So, if I do that, now what we will do here is essentially consider small perturbations, right. If we consider small perturbations, what we know here is that, uh, that u wall, u prime, right. So, which would mean that, which would mean that I can actually write this as right i can actually write it uh, like this right if i can write it uh, like this then this i can also write in terms of the velocity potential perturbed velocity potential which will be right so therefore slope okay the slope out here is uh, the v w prime this and then I write v w in terms of the uh, perturbation potential okay, so gradient of the perturbation potential in the y direction at the wall. So, this is an expression that we get. Okay. Now, if I do that let us so therefore, call this expression as label it as 1. Now, so, this is from the velocity component, the velocity consideration. Now, the wall, the, uh, the uh, contour of the wall by geometry in terms of x and y is also given to us, right. Since that is given to us, we can also do this. right is since that is given to us so which is right so therefore if i consider the slope of the wall right what i get is Right. So, this is what we get and let us call at this as 2. Okay. So, this is from the geometry consideration of the physical wall itself and from the velocity considerations. So, let me write that again. So, from the velocity considerations again what we got is that the slope is this. Right. And this was so, clearly this is from the velocity consideration and this is from the geometry consideration. So, let us put these two together, right. So, basically though, therefore, if this is equal to this, right. So, if I uh, you uh, if this is equal to this, so therefore, what we get from here is that del phi p del y, right, at the wall is equal to 
minus 2 pi h by L into V infinity sin ok. So, we have ok and let us call this as say g ok. Now, um, if I do this and of course, uh, we have reduced we, our a 2 has basically uh, gone to. Uh, so, a 2 has basically now gone to 0. So, del phi p. So, we have this expression right. So, now the next thing is that essentially having done this So, now we know that phi p is f x and g y. So, how do we write this? So, now uh, f x is essentially ok ok. Now, g y g y if you look at this we said a 2 is equal to 0. So, therefore, we are left with this ok. So, which is a 1 exponential right. So, we have this. So, now what we, we, we will do here now what we will do here is that we will take we will find out del phi p del y is that if I do that from here what I get is this does not change. So, if I do this what I get is a 1 into ok into into y ok. Now, what we will do is now we need basically at the wall at the wall right. Now, at the wall now let us come back here. So, essentially we need the del phi p del y at this wall ok. Now, we have assumed small perturbation we we, we which means that h is very small which means that. So, if I use a small perturbation theory, so then we say that h is very small which means that uh, this wall is very close to y is equal to 0. So, if I take here so del phi p del y at the wall would also essentially mean that we are saying del phi p del y for for the y car for the y uh, direction to be almost 0 ok. So, if I do that if I do that what do I get here what I get from here is minus a 1 into this ok I think I missed out into ok into this ok. So, let us call this as let us call this uh, relationship as let us call this relationship as i. So, essentially now what we have done is now we have a del phi del y relationship ok which we derived considering the uh, physical slope which was given to us and the velocity considerations here and we got an expression for that in terms of x right x uh, here and um, this expression. 
Now, from here, now then again, this is from our math that we did. Okay. So, using uh, this uh, relationship that our velocity potential, which we are using over here, is essentially written in terms of this f and g. We input that in here, okay, and then we wrote an expression for del phi del y. Now, we need the del phi, we have an expression, a specific uh, expression for del phi del y at the wall. So, using a small perturbation theory, we said that this del phi del y at the wall for a small perturbation, which means h is nearly 0, which would mean that it is nearly 0 to the y ordinate being 0 and we get this expression. So, next step is of course, to equate these two. Okay? So, we will continue with this in the uh, next lecture. Okay? Thank you.